Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my Java algorithms tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about recursion, what it is, how it works, and on top of that, we're going to take a look at what are triangular numbers, what are factorials, and how to use recursion in the merge sort. All of the tutorials in my Java algorithms tutorial series is available in a link in the upper right hand corner if you want to look at something else. I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. So, what exactly is a recursive method? It's just a method that calls itself. And with each method call, the problem is going to become simpler and simpler. And the only condition with a recursive method is that it will eventually lead to a point where the method no longer calls itself. So let's see exactly what that looks like. Over here on the right hand side of the screen, you will see a recursive method and it is named get try number. And if you pass in a value like six into this guy, well obviously six is not equal to one. So we skip over this condition. We get down here where num is going to be equal to six, of course. And then we have a call to the method itself and it is going to pass in a five. Whenever that happens again, you have a situation where you do not know what this is, but you know what this is equal to. And that is again going to be five and you're going to pass in four. Then you get a situation where you have a four plus whatever the result of this calculation. And then you have three plus whatever three minus one equal to two and the two goes back into the method again. And then as we approach the end you see that two plus get try number and we are passing a one in and whenever you look at this guy up here you can see that we are getting to the end and the number one is passed in just as you can see here it goes up here then we can now calculate the previous method 2 plus 1 is going to be equal to 3 now that we have a result for that we can pass that up here now that we have a result for this guy we can pass the 6 up here now that we have a result for that we can pass the 10 up here and now that we have a result for this we can pass the 15 up there and that is how recursion would work if you're trying to find the nth triangular number and if you don't know what a triangular number is don't worry I'm going to cover that in a second so let's look at recursion using a totally different layout if that didn't solidify it in your mind. Right here I have three methods and they are all inside of boxes because this is how recursion works. So let's say a three is passed into my recursive method. Again, we get to a situation where we do not know what the value is after this calculation is done. Hence, all of these methods are going to be calling down to these guys until we get to the part right here where one minus one is going to be equal to zero and this is going to return a value of one as it did right there. Now that we have a return value, we can now take this one and pass it up here and that's exactly what we did and now we know that 2 plus 1 is going to be equal to 3 just as you see right there and now we can return a 3 up here and whenever we do that 3 plus 3 is going to be equal to 6 and all of our method calls are done so there's two different ways to look at recursion now let's look at it using code so here is our code and all the code here, both that I show you as well as the code that I don't show is available in a link in the description under the video. So what I'm going to do here first off is to show you what triangular numbers are. And I'm just going to come in here and go recursion tool and then I'm going to calculate and print out triangular numbers. So let's say I want to do it up to the sixth triangular number. I'll save that and execute. Now you know what a triangular number is. The first one doesn't look much like a triangle, but you can see that the second one most definitely does. And all that we're doing here is going one, two, and three and finding the triangular number. Then once again, we are finding the third triangular number by going one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, there is the third triangular number. And you can see that there is going to be a equal equal number of rows to ultimate columns. That's why it looks like a triangle and that's why it is called triangular numbers. So now before I show you how to create triangular numbers or calculate triangular numbers using recursion, I'm going to show you how to do it not using recursion because even though triangular numbers and recursion are normally taught together, it ultimately doesn't make sense to use recursion when calculating triangular numbers. But don't worry about it and you can forget that I just said that. Just focus on the recursion part. This is how you would calculate 
calculate triangular numbers if you didn't want to use recursion. Pretty simple. So I can just go triangular number is equal to zero. And how you actually calculate a triangular number is let's say you wanted to find the third triangular number, you would just go three plus two plus one and get six. That is the third triangular number and that's how they're calculated. So now knowing that, what we're gonna do is go while number is greater than zero, we're going to calculate our triangular numbers by decrementing backwards from our three. So triangular number is gonna be equal to triangular number plus number. And then we're going to decrement backwards from that. And then after this, we're gonna go return triangular number. Then if we jump back up into main and see how easy it is to print that out, we're gonna go recursion tool, throw that in there and get triangular number. And we can throw a six inside of there and let's just block this out so it's not confusing. And go in here and put TN just to give a little bit of information and execute. And there you can see triangular number is gonna be equal to 21. 21 is the sixth triangular number. So now let's take a look at how to calculate or find triangular numbers using recursion. I'm actually going to put a couple things inside of this so that we're going to be able to easily see what's going on as recursion is occurring. So we're going to go pass in our number just like we did before. And just to reiterate, every recursive method is going to have a condition that leads to the method no longer making another call on itself. And that condition is known as the base case. So in this situation, it's going to be number equal to one. And the other example I show you is going to be very, very similar. But because I want to show you exactly what is going on here, which method is going to be entered inside of this. I'm going to put number right there. And here, I'm going to put the value that is going to be returned. And then, of course, I'm going to return that value. And then we're going to get into this situation where a one was not entered. In that situation, we're going to calculate a result, which is going to be number plus. And this is going to be the method call back to itself, right like that. And of course, we're going to pass whatever the number is minus one into that guy to get the result. Then, so that I can just print some information here on the screen so you can see what's going on, I'm going to come in here and type in result. So result will get printed out on the screen. And I'm going to get rid of this because I want to put some additional information inside of here. And that additional information is going to be the actual method that is going to be executed. And here I'm just going to go get TN just to be simple. Plus you'll see what this looks like in a second. And then of course we're going to return our result. And then if we bounce up here, let's copy this first and get to this guy right here. Cha well, I can actually just change that to R and execute it. You're going to see exactly what goes on when these triangular numbers are executed again. We're going to enter method six, enter method five, four, three, two, one. One is going to get a return value, which is going to be equal to one. Two plus one is going to be equal to three. And three plus three is going to be equal to six. And four plus six is going to be equal to 10. And five plus 10 is going to be equal to 15. And six plus 15 is finally going to be equal to 21. And we know now what the sixth triangular number is using recursion and you can see exactly right there exactly how it's calculated. So now let's take a look at how to calculate factorials in much the same way. So I'm going to scroll down inside of here. And of course, the factorial of three is going to be calculated three times two times one. That is our factorial, which of course is going to be equal to six. So now we have to actually come in here and calculate that. And of course, I'm going to use recursion. So I'm going to go public int get factorial. It's going to receive a number. And of course, I'm going to put a little note inside of here so you can see exactly how the method is going to be entered and so forth and so on. And then we're going to put our base case inside of here equal to one. Again, we're going to be doing a very, very similar thing. Return one. And then, of course, we're going to have one return. And then, of course, we're going to go else, calculate the result, which is going to be number times get factorial call to itself. It's going to pass in number minus one system out returned. And this is going to be the result of the calculation. And then let's jump up here and actually copy this. So I don't have to actually type all that out again, because like I said, very, very similar and change this to print paste that in there. And here it's going to be factorial. And then the difference is going to be this is going to be a multiplication sign. And then of course, after we're done messing around with that, we can actually calculate and return our result. Now get factorial, jump up here, factorial, 
Throw this inside of there, file save, and execute. And there you can see exactly how factorials are calculated. Just exactly the same. Method 6, method 5, method 4, method 3, method 2, method 1. Method 1 is going to return 1. 2 times 1 is going to be equal to 2. And 3 times 2 is going to be equal to 6. And 3 times 4 is going to be equal to 24. And so on, and so on, and so on. So there are two more examples of how to use recursion to make calculations and do all kinds of funky stuff. Now rather than type out a whole bunch of information about the merge sort, I'm going to instead show you precisely how it works. Now the merge sort is going to sort in a very very neat and organized way very very fast as well and of course it's going to use recursion to do so. Now I could have went through here and typed out all of this code but instead I just went in and heavily commented it and decided to focus all of my time in this part of the tutorial to actually showing you the merge sort work because most of the time you're just going to simply copy and paste and execute a merge sort you're not going to try to memorize it but it is important to understand how it works. So let's execute this guy. Okay, so you can see here, this is the start of our array and these are the indexes and then these are the values that are going to be stored inside of them. Well, let's just look at exactly what is going on. As we are going down through this, we are going to hit a part where we are going to judge the differences between index zero and one. And as you can see here, we're checking to see if 10 is less than eight. Well, of course it's not. So what we're going to do with the merge sort is we're going to store the value of 8 in a temporary variable. We are then going to take the value that is stored in the 0 index, which is 10, and instead store it in the 1 index. Why? Because we are then going to copy 8, which was stored in temp, into the 0 index. And as we come down here, you can see that is precisely what happened. They switched places. Then as we continue onwards, you can see that it's then going to judge the differences between what is in index 2 and 3. See, it's slowly going through this array and sorting it bit by bit. So it's going to say, is 4 less than 80? Of course. Hence, we have nothing left to do. So now we have the first two indexes sorted and the second grouping of indexes sorted. So now what we need to do is sort all four of these and that's exactly how the merge sort works. So if we move onwards, we're going to be checking if eight is less than four. Since that comes back false, what are we going to do? We're going to store 4 in a temporary variable. And because we already know that 8 is less than the value that is in stored inside of index 1, we can move 4 down to here. And that is precisely what we do just by shifting these indexes along until we get to the part right down here. And you can also see I have a whole bunch of information on the screen in addition to what I'm actually talking about to help you along if you wanted to do this on your own. You can see that the 4 gets shifted there and the 8 and the 10 get moved up. Next we're going to check if this index is less than this index, which it isn't, and then finally we are going to check if 10 is less than 80, which of course it is, and you can see once we get to this part that the first part, the first four rather than the first two, are all going to be in proper order. Then what the merge sort does is focuses on this second part and sorts it. As you're going to see, we're going through here. We're going to be moving the one into this position, which is exactly what happens there. And then we're going to be moving the three into the 13 position, which is exactly what we are going to do right here. And then of course, finally, we're going to sort this second part to move the 11 where the 13 is. And that's what we did right there. Once again, these two are in order and these two are in order. So now we have to get all of those in perfect order, all four of them. And we're going to move onward and take all of these array parts and move them in order by shifting just as we did previously until the whole entire array is sorted and in perfect order. So that is a run through quickly of how the merge sort works. Once again, I have all the code and it's heavily, heavily commented for the merge sort if you want to take a look at it. But I thought it would be interesting to look at it as it was being executed like this rather than just going line by line by line of code. Please leave any questions or comments below. Up next, I'm going to cover some more sorting algorithms. Otherwise, till next time.